Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to the first shorts. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So alhamdulillah, we are down now to the last 10 episodes of the first shorts. Inshallah ta'ala, what we're going to do with season two, where we'll pick up at 71, is we will then go into the madani phase, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll continue with some of the longer biographies. However, I must say, this last batch of 10, is very near and dear to my heart when we're talking about As-Sabiqun Al-Awwalun, we're talking about the first Muslims from the Muhajireen. And I pray that inshallah ta'ala, you'll find these all highly beneficial inshallah ta'ala, as we get to now a man whose name has become synonymous with being first, and that is Ukasha ibn Mihsan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, there's almost, you know, if you've heard this name, you've heard it only in the capacity of one story in the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu And that is precisely why I want to cover him inshallah ta'ala in a bit of detail. So his name is Ukasha or Ukasha with a shadda on the kaf. Both of them are, uh, are, are uh, you know, ways that his name is pronounced. So Ukasha or Ukasha ibn Mihsan al-Asadi. He was a halif, an ally of Banu Abd al-Shams. So he is a Meccan Muslim. He is one of the earliest Muslims, and we will talk about how he and his siblings entered into Islam. But before that, how is it that his name has become synonymous with preceding others? To the point, by the way, that in poetry, if someone is referred to as an Ukasha or a Ukasha, they're being referred to as a forerunner. Um, you know, some of the scholars mention, in fact, even in dream interpretation, if you saw this companion, Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in your dream, then that is a sign that you are going to precede others to something. That's how synonymous his name is with preceding others towards that which is good. When you talk about the Mubashireen, those who are guaranteed paradise, sometimes they get asked this question, how come the Prophet only guaranteed 10 people paradise? Al-Ashr al-Mubashireen the 10 promised paradise. And if you have not figured out by now, there are multiple people who the Prophet ﷺ actually promised paradise to and gave that bishara to, that glad tidings to. However, those 10 had a special categorization with the Messenger ﷺ. When it comes to Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he is one of those that is considered amongst the Mubashirin, amongst those who was guaranteed paradise by the Prophet ﷺ, but not any type of bishara, not any type of glad tidings. He is given the bishara, he is giving the glad tidings that he is going to enter paradise without any form of questioning, without any form of punishment. So zero accountability when he shows up on the day of judgment and enters into Jannah. The story is of course a famous one. It's narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu stood up and this is now in Medina. So this is after Ukasha has made hijrah to Medina and we'll talk about his biography. The Prophet sallallahu says that from my ummah, there is a group of 70,000 people whose faces will glitter as the moon. Their, their faces will, will shine as bright as the full moon on the day of judgment. And they will enter into Jannah without any form of adab or any form of hisab, no punishment and no questioning. They will enter into paradise without being punished and without even being questioned. Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he got up and he lifted his covering sheet and he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, do Allah an akuna minhum, make dua, ask Allah to make me amongst them. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Anta minhum, you are amongst them. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Allah, make him amongst them. And then when he said that, another man from the people of Medina stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah that I am amongst them. And the Prophet ﷺ responded famously, Sabaqaqa biha ukasha, ukasha beat you to it. Ukasha preceded you to it. Now this narration, which is in Al-Bukhari, uh, the scholars have a few interpretations of it. One of them, which, uh, which, which is that, uh, you know, this was something that was guaranteed for a small group of people. And Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu stood up and that other man, while he might have been from the companions of the Prophet and maybe from the Ansar as well, as is suggested by the wording of one narration, 
that he does not reach the level of Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Another interpretation, some of the scholars said that the man could have even been from amongst the hypocrites. And so the Prophet them saying, Ukasha preceded you to it, is that the Prophet them did not want to include him amongst that group. But this was the Prophet them's nice way of saying that he would not make dua for him. And because the man is not named, it's okay to uh, you know, to entertain either one of those interpretations, that either this was just something special for Ukash radiallahu ta'ala anhu in that gathering, and that man simply does not make that cut, or the Prophet وسلم, in his high akhlaq and his high manners and morals uh, did not include him because he might have been from amongst the hypocrites of Medina instead. So what makes Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu worthy? And this is something that I think is very important. It's not that Ukasha just lucked out in a gathering and said, Ya Rasulullah, make me amongst them. He has a history that he puts behind that request, that talab, right? That, that request to be included amongst those 70,000. This is an important point that when you ask Allah for something, you should live your life in accordance with that request, especially when you're talking about his pleasure and his paradise. And this is certainly the case with Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So what's his story? Ukasha and his siblings actually embraced Islam early on in Mecca and none of them were particularly old. So they were all considered amongst the youth when they heard the message of the Prophet sallallahu and embraced Islam. So his sister, Umm Qais radiallahu ta'ala anha also is considered amongst the first people to embrace Islam. And she's an interesting woman, Umm Qais bint Muhsan uh, or Mihsan, because she lived to be over a hundred years old. So she's actually a hadith narrator. Some of the, uh, the tabi'een would narrate hadith from her later on. He also has a brother by the name of Abu Sinan. Abu Sinan ibn Mihsan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Sinan, according to one narration, is the first person to take Bay'atul Ridwan, to take the pledge of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, under the tree in Hudaybiyah. Now, w- when you talk about this particular group of people that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they took the pledge with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hudaybiyah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions that he was pleased with them. So Abu Sinan, the brother of Rukash, that's a special family. Abu Sinan, according to some narrations, is the very first person to stand in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to take that pledge with him on that day. And he also has uh, two other brothers that also are considered from As-Sabiqoon Al-Awwaloon, also considered from the first Muslims, uh, Amr ibn Mihsan and Wahb, uh, though we don't know anything about them at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. So this is a group of siblings that all had this special flair inside of them to embrace Islam and to dedicate themselves to it. And in the process to precede others towards much khair, towards much good. Now, when it comes to Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu himself, he's described as being one of the most handsome of men, one of the most generous of men. He had a big smile on his face all the time radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was also a, a, you know, a person who when he dedicated himself to something, he gave it his all and he exceeded in whatever he dedicated himself to. So the Prophet sallam, for example, appoints him early on in Islam as the commander of a battalion of 40 men and Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu is given much success in that role. And one of the most famous incidents of Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu is in the Battle of Badr. So he's one of the muhajideen. He's one of the people who embraced Islam early. He's one of those who made hijrah to Medina. So he qualifies as an early Muslim. He qualifies as a muhajir, as someone who left behind everything in Mecca to come to Medina. And then he's a Badri. He's one of the companions of Badr, the veterans of Badr, the best of all of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in Badr, he has this special incident that takes place where he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Badr and his sword is broken. So in the, in the process of fighting in Badr, his sword broke. And he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, what should I fight with? I don't know what to do. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he picks up a stick, okay? And he hands him a stick and he says, Qatil bihada. He tells Ukasha radiallahu anhu, fight with this. And Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu takes that stick. He doesn't question the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa right? If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa handed him the stick and said, fight with it, then I'm gonna fight with it. And as soon as Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu swung that stick, it became in his hand a shiny sword, okay? And it was a sword that was prominent. It was, 
you know, it, it could not be mistaken for any other sword. And Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu would fight with that sword, that particular sword for the rest of his life and everyone knew the miracle of that sword. Okay, and by the way, this is a hint of a series that is to come inshallah ta'ala very soon that you'll be hearing about with Nanai ta'ala. And so Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this is a miracle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi of course, but that was established for him radiallahu ta'ala anhu that uh, he had this particular sword that the companions used to refer to as the sword of aid. It was divinely given to Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he would use that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the rest of his life. So you have a man who is a muhajir, a person who migrated, a person who fought early on as a commander in Islam, a person who fought in the Battle of Badr, a person who is in Medina and who is told that you will enter into paradise without even being questioned. Not only will you not be punished, you will not even be questioned. So let me ask you this question. If you were Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu and you got that bishara, you got that glad tiding from the Prophet sallallahu as well as the glad tiding of Hijrah, as well as the glad tiding of Badr, being from the veterans of Badr, you're probably going to take it easy for the rest of your life, right? You know, you're, you don't really have to do much because you've been given the highest guarantee. But in the case of Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was always amongst the first to come forward when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi called upon him. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi passed away and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu summoned the loyal companions, it was Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu who once again was amongst the first people to come forward with that sword that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him as a stick that, tur that turned into that sword and to continue to fight and to continue to, to strive. And he dies as a martyr radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the battle against al-Murtadeen, the war against the apostates in the case of Musaylama al kadhab So SubhanAllah, he dies as a shaheed as well. So this narration, Sabaqaka biha Ukasha, Ukasha beat you to it, should not be looked at as just a guy who lucked out. This is what we call Sidqud He had a truthful intention and his actions matched up with his intentions. And that is why Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Min al mu'minina rijalun sadaqu ma'ahadullah alayhi. There are people that are truthful to the covenant that they took with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we learn from him that when you hear of a good quality, when you hear of a good call, when you read about a good trait in the Quran, when you hear something from the Prophet Sallallahu don't look around and wait for someone else to lead the way. You be that person to lead the way. You be that person to look around and to see that there's a void in your community and fill that void. You see a trend, you see a sunnah that can be revived. You revive that sunnah. You be the trendsetter of good. And in the process of that, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count you and I amongst those 70,000 as well. And of course, the Prophet sallam, gave descriptions of, those, of, of that group of people and they were multiplied and multiplied. May Allah count us amongst them and enter us into paradise without any form of adab or any form of hisab. Allahumma ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with this wonderful companion, Ukasha radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his siblings and allow us to meet him and them in the highest level of Jannah to Firdaus with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma Ameen. Jazakumullahu Khairan. I'll see you next time, inshaAllah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.